Ah, thanks for joining again. It's part three of this flutter, fast flutter coding experience. Um, for those who maybe haven't watched the first two, uh, the intention with this series is kind of just to uh, build a fairly simple app uh, while paying attention to the kind of things you probably would in a larger scale application to sort of just build those patterns. Um, I am uh, purposely not over preparing um, for these as opposed to maybe other videos I've done uh, just to kind of uh, get things out quicker get you know build more as opposed to spending you know a lot of time planning um, so we're just going to uh, continue where we left off uh, as a review um, <clears throat> and a reminder uh, basically we're building is kind of like a grocery app um, uh, the main difference between this and like maybe like a to-do list sort of app is that uh, we're going to organize things in the various locations of a grocery store that you would get things so that when you go there, you're not, uh, you know, you don't have this massively long list. And then all of a sudden, like you realize, oh, you were supposed to get cucumbers and you're already out of that section. So it's a pretty simple idea. Um, I'm actually building it um, because I, I just want something like this. Maybe there's something that exists, but I just want to build it the way that I want. Um and the long-term sort of intention is uh, it, it will be using an API uh, that we'll be building as well um, outside of Flutter, obviously, but but uh, um, this could be an app that you could share with your partner uh, so that, you know, if you both do groceries or you whatever you think is something, you know, you can add it. It's not just a, an app that lives on one device. Uh, the database will be, you know, centralized somewhere. So basically what we have now is our wonderful list. We have a little reloading thing happening here. We have the ability to check them off. Uh, and currently we have an ability to at least type out a new one. Um, and we have this sort of form. Uh, this will not do anything yet, uh, but you do see that the name is being captured down here. So that's kind of where we got so far. Uh, as a sort of reminder of everything, the kind of way I had it broken up is within my lib, we have various screens. Uh, right now there's just two. Uh, and then we have, um, we'll just start at the top here, uh, different components. So these are, you know, things shared little um, stateless or sometimes stateful widgets that we will be using. Uh, mocks, this is where our data is actually, because uh, we don't have a database yet, uh, we're creating it in mocks. Um, so this is kind of like, a, at least how I imagine the API would look of uh, when you get, you know, get something back from it. Uh, so it's not, uh, these aren't models, these are just uh, basically JSON objects. Uh, maps in Dart. Uh, then we have the model itself, uh, grocery item, um, which has a few different uh, things such as uh, an ID, a name, a category, and whether or not it's been purchased. Uh, and we sort of have like a way to serialize it from JSON. Um, we have some helpers to kind of convert the category enum to a friendly name and 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 the name that the database would uh, would be using, et cetera, et cetera. What else we have? Uh, providers are, uh, so this is using something called getit, um, and it's kind of like a singleton object that we can we can use. And this is what we spent on the last video, probably the most time, most time doing, uh, was creating this. Um, and I will get, I'm not gonna go through it line by line or anything, you can just watch the last video, uh, but we'll be touching this a bit more today, I'm sure. And we have some screens. And then services. So my difference between services and providers, services are kind of like a repository, like this will ultimately talk to a server somewhere where we're augmenting that with doing a uh, future.delayed. So we still have kind of the idea of, oh, it's taking time to do something. Uh, you know, if I was to just remove this, for instance, you would see that it reloads instantly, like nothing even changes because it's the same. Uh, this allows us to, uh, you know, pretend there's a network involved and deal with, you know, things like loading, loading bars and stuff. Um, so this is using Riverpod, our services. Uh, Riverpod's a lot like Provider. It's actually built by the same person who made Provider. Um, what I like more about it uh, is that you can not only use it in your um, in your build methods, like in, in a widget, uh, but you can actually call um, easily call this from another service or or whatever. Uh, you can you know have services that call services or or whatever. It's not specific to uh, part of the build you know the build cycle. Um, versus a provider is this is more like a singleton. This is managing the state of a form. Um, that's kind of the main differences there. All right, let's get into it. 
where do we want to start um, or continue, I guess? Okay, so yeah, this is kind of where we were. Uh, if we open up our, um, let's just look at our screen right now. So this is the add grocery item screen, um, which talks to our form provider, which we just had open a moment ago. And we are kind of doing this handle save where right now we're just, you know, printing the new item. Um, but uh, um, we obviously would want to do something else here. So two things we need to do. Um, first of all, Right now, what does save item even do? If we go search for this, we'll see first to make sure that it is valid. Uh, if not, it set it it just stops and doesn't continue on. Then we set a field called is processing, which so that we can uh, essentially show like a progress spinner sort of thing. Um, and because we're mocking an API, you know, we're we're just doing this delay of 500 sec 500 milliseconds, so half a second. Then we create a new grocery item based off of that. So again, we don't have an API, uh, so I'm just sending the ID to something random, uh, you know, 99. <laughs> um, also, we haven't done the form input for uh, for the category yet. We'll get there. Uh, generally, I mean, I'd say no matter what, anything that you newly create should never be purchased uh, yet because what's the point of creating it if you already marked it as done? Um, so this is all pretty good. Uh, so I guess what we want to do, we're creating this, there would be an API call. We would actually have to change this a bit when we get to that part, but let's, uh, let's actually do something with this object. So, um, let me just think for a second. Um, I'm just going to break this up, make it a little more readable and we'll get our, uh, grocery item service, for example. So when we have a, we're going to have, we have this service and we're definitely going to eventually use this service to actually uh, create a new item. And here we would want to pass in, you know, the data for this object. Um, so I am actually going to accept, um, do we want to make one? You know what? No, let's do this a little bit differently. Uh, let's pass in, whenever we're making a grocery item, let's just pass in a string of its name as well as a uh, string, uh, what else do we need? Oh, and yeah, just the category. So a grocery item category, I think it's called. Oh, nope, <laughs> category. What is it actually called? Let's, let's find out. Oh, it's just called category. Okay, awesome. So we're going to get a category, which should be imported, uh, and we'll call that category. I don't think this actually came in. Why is that not coming in? Uh, it should, wait. There is something strange happening. Uh, future this, make this async. Uh, we're passing in, why doesn't it know what category is? Um, maybe I have multiple categories. I'm just gonna, we're gonna do something here because um, I think there's some kind of conflict between category maybe being used somewhere else. Uh, so I'm gonna import grocery item just as model because there's only gonna be one, at least for now, a model being used here. And then every time that we reference grocery item, which is that model, we'll just say model.grocery item. And that should allow us to say model.category. Uh, oh, we missed one here. So that's just something that uh, you sometimes have to do when you know you have conflicts between something. So I'm at, oh, this is what happened, yeah. I think it imported foundation. Foundation must have something called category in it. Category, somewhere deep in this. So we probably could, could have fixed it a different way, but um, this works fine. Uh, actually, yeah, let's, let's fix it. This is kind of messy. We're gonna go back, uh, I'm gonna get rid of, Rid of foundation, get rid of this, and then I think we're good. So basically, I think there was a conflict in foundation, but we're not actually using foundation. It just auto imported when I type the word category. All right. Uh, so when we create, what we're actually going to go is we did this service here. We're actually going to um, move some of this logic over here. So we're going to do this await here um, as if we are, uh, you know, just to kind of do that delay. And then we are going to um, make a new grocery item. 
So really what would happen here is we would hit an API passing up these values and it would return something you know, similar to this JSON that's that's this map that's being put here. Um, we gotta change these to say name, and we gotta say this to say category. And um, do, 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 do. and then we ultimately need to return, um, and this is called new grocery item. We can just call this grocery item now. And that's almost good, except for the fact that uh, this is supposed to be a string, um, not a reference to that. So we have a helper. We have something in our model where we can convert between category from string or string from category. And I am going to do it that way. Uh, we want to take, we want to do string from category. So this is part of grocery item. So I'm going to go grocery item dot string from category and pass in that category. This will change a little bit when we have an API because really we would be getting back, um, you know, that thing anyways as you know it's serialized the way we would we would expect it. Um, but this is a good thing for now. There we go. So instead of doing this here and this here, really what we want to go is await, and we can just go the uh, what's the name of the service? It's called grocery item service dot create and we see it's telling us to pass in the name in the category and i probably shouldn't erase that already uh that code that i um here's a trick command x command z z z z z z z z and then paste this back in and then we grab this same thing for name and here we should be able to just go category dot i'm going to do miscellaneous uh that we will make that dynamic shortly. Then we can get rid of the stuff that we no longer want. Um, and this needs to be re-imported because we lost it. Uh, and let's just do final new grocery item equals this. So it cleans up our uh, our form provider a bit more, and this is closer to what we would really want when we you know when we do this surreal. Okay. So let's just make sure that that is working. Um, print, let's just do new grocery item dot uh, name. And now we could use a debugger and all that stuff, but there's no, you know, debugging with print is, is just, it's just the way to go sometimes. So if I click save, you see, duh, I get that and that. Now it printed twice and I wonder why. Um, I wonder why it printed twice. Uh, there's probably just another print statement somewhere. Um, let's find out. It'd be nice if it told me like what line this came from. Uh, so we're printing new grocery item dot name. It's not happening there. Print. Or maybe that was just an old one. Oh no, wait, okay. But this one came after. So this was that, that was that. Okay, so it must be in the screen. Ah, there it is, look, <laughs> there's my other print. See, I was just talking how good prints are, but they're also like, can really get confusing. Okay, so we know stuff is working. Um, so what do we really wanna do? After we save it, um, we need to actually, uh, we want it to be part of our list. Now, uh, when this is an API, we could just like recall our API again and get a new list and get, get it fresh. Um, but that's not gonna work for us now because uh, we're just using a mock. So Really, what we are going to do is, um, so let's look at our list function again. It goes, gets the grocery items, it does a little bit of delay just for fun, and then it, you know, returns these things. So, um, and where do these come from? These come from, yeah, grocery items. So what I'm going to do is we're going to actually just make a, uh, um, on our service, at least for now, until we have our API, um, we are going to create a list of um, type grocery item. We'll call it items, and it's just going to be equal to that initially. Um, then what we can do on initialization of this service, no, nope, we don't want to do it there. We would want to do it the first time that we get the list. So we got this, we got this. Um, and what we can, what we should be able to do is we can just say, um, items, anytime we list, 
we can make items equal to uh, results. We can just do that, and then we can return, you know, return those items or whatever. Now, when we create, we would want to say items dot push or dot append. Nope. Dot dot ins What is dot add? Sorry, like JavaScript, it's push. Python, it's append. Dart, it's add. Um, my bad. And we're just gonna go dot add grocery item. All right. Okay, so when we list, we want to. One sec. I wonder if we should do this a little. Right now, if like if we had this API built, this actually would be a bit more straightforward because um, I, likely I would in in this case it's such a simple app. You know, we would just call, you know, call this thing again when it closes, and it would just like show up. But the problem is, if I call this list again, it's going to um, replace items. So we could actually do something like items equal, uh, we could like append that list, but then if you were to refresh, like you would get it multiple times. He's sometimes working with, with mocks actually um, can get a bit annoying. So I think what we will do is do this a bit more proper. And we are going to create another provider. Um, now this, what I'm doing right now is something you could do in Redux, you could do in Block, uh, you know, Qubit, those kinds of things. Um, but I am, um, we're, we're using, we're using Riverpod and we're using, um, get it. And this is something that I think would fit well as a provider as something that can kind of just keep, keep our memory, uh, our memory store of, of, you know, whatever items in our list. So we're going to do that, um, that way right now. Uh, again, if you're using Block you would just do it um, the block way. Uh, but this way will work totally fine. So I'm just gonna make a provider called grocery list provider. So this is supposed to be a list or a, a provider to just manage the state of our grocery list rather than just relying directly on, you know, hitting an API. Um, so we'll, we'll do this uh, and I'm gonna open up as a reference our uh, form provider. It's gonna be similar uh, to this, but probably a lot simpler. So we're gonna make an abstract class called grocery list provider, and it's going to extend change notifier so that we can subscribe to updates and all that kind of stuff. Um, and similar to this, we are going to, I'm just gonna copy this, but this will actually be a list of grocery items. Um, let's get our import happening and grocery items, and it's going to just equal uh, nothing to begin, like an empty array, not nothing. Um, okay, and then what we need is we want to have a getter, um, and we'll just do that, uh, except it's going to give us a list of grocery items. So we have our getter. Uh, we also will definitely need a um, an operation for, uh, we'll make it, it, yeah, nothing in here, at least that I can think of right now, will be asynchronous, because uh, it's kind of just a, a store. It's going to be like, put data here, give me data. Um, so no future needed. Um, let's just do add item, and it will take a grocery item, and we'll just call it item. And um, that's probably it. So then what we can do is make our class called grocery list provider implementation. It's a long one and it's going to extend grocery list provider. And we see it gives us this error, uh, which is super helpful because we can click this and go give us those two missing overrides, which is add item and grocery items. Now the order of these, I prefer the getters first. So let's just do that. Um, all this is gonna return, at least for the time being is just return grocery items. Uh, and this is just going to do kind of the logic we started to do somewhere else. Uh, we can just go add item, or sorry, um, grocery items dot um, add item. And we wanna make sure whenever we add an item, we also notify listeners. And that's something that comes from change notifier and that's so that we can, um, if something's listening for updates, it knows to, to rebuild.
Okay. So now we have this. Uh, we have to we have to hook it into our app. Um, so we have this register singletons area that we've already made. I can just copy and paste this and grab the name of this guy, and it's going to ask me to import it. And then I can paste this again and just start writing. Hopefully, start writing implementation, and everything should be good. Now we will have to do a at least a reload, not a full rebuild, but definitely not a hot uh, a hot reload. Uh, or maybe maybe a hot reload would still work then. But usually when I make big changes like that, so big massive change, um, I like to just do a better refresh. Um, and just a learning note, like if you for that for this, like, you know, between this and this and stopping and rebuilding, if you are adding a new pub package, um, a lot of the times you do have to actually stop your app and rebuild if if there's any native things that need to be installed. So certain pub packages, you actually don't because if it's just dark code, it will be fine. Um, at least in, in version two. But um, but if it's yeah, it needs to actually like install something in Xcode. Like of course it it's it can't just uh, it's not that good yet. Okay, so first let's refactor um, this list to be using this list, uh, and that makes me also um, realize we should have another operation called set items. So instead of just adding one, um, we we actually would pass in a list of grocery items. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to loop through and go add item, add item, and it would be notifying listeners every time. Um, that's a lot. Oops, grocery item. And we'll see that we uh, we have this lovely uh, quick fix here. Yep, we'll create that missing override, sure. And this will just be um, grocery items dot add or dot, uh, or wait, grocery items equal items. And then we just go um, and notify listeners. And I'm thinking, because uh, this is the grocery list provider, like I don't think we have to use the word grocery every time. So I'm actually just going to refactor this. Uh, you can right click and go rename symbol. And this works across um, files too, if if Dart, when, when VS Code is smart enough to see you know, this. Uh, because it's a private variable, it's obviously not being used anywhere else. So this should be a pretty just find and replace. Uh, but we'll see it got changed to items. So now we have items. Uh, and then this, we should also just uh, change to items as well. Just keep it consistent. Okay, so let's refactor to use uh, for our API service to essentially use this. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Um, so what I'm going to do is sorry, I'm just uh, thinking. There's many different ways to do this, and I'm trying to think what would be best in this case. Like either we could set it right here when we call list, um, which would be probably fine. Um, or we could actually have um, this thing when it boots up, we could actually make it go and fetch the data and set it itself. Uh, that's kind of an interesting way to do it. Uh, I think that's the way we'll do it, to be honest. So um, what I'm going to do is make a... In which case, this is going to kind of become like the core interface we actually work with in our code, um, and this will be something that is only really used by this in 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 theory. So that means we're going to need a few more things, but it's actually going to simplify stuff for us. But let, let's start small. Um, let's start with doing this. So uh, this is a class, so it has a constructor, and you can you can do stuff when this first initializes. And in this case, I'm actually going to go grocery item service dot um, list. I'm going to call that. And I'm just going to make something called um, final items is going to be equal to this. And then I'm going to go uh, this, uh, I'm going to say set items, or I can say this dot set items. I actually like usually prefer, um, oh, we have to wait, sorry, we have to wait. We don't want to just, oh my gosh. Um, Expression going to use an async function, right, right, right. Uh, we just, I think I can just make this async, right? Probably not. It's a constructor. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. Do this a million times. So I'm going to make a function just called init. This will be a private function that only this class has access to. It'll be async, in which case we can go uh, future void. It's not going to actually return anything. Um, and it's just saying it's not a thing. And then we can just call it here. 
So that allows us to still use async within our constructor, kind of. Uh, the alternative would have been doing this as like a, a, a prop, more like a promise or like a, not a promise, but a, you know, do this, then do this, but I love using a wait when I can. So that means whenever this is constructed, which is actually only gonna happen once um, because it's a singleton and it happens right at the start, we will get uh, this list and it's gonna set the items to items. And we don't have to do change notifier here because set items will automatically uh, notify its listeners. So that should be good. Then we'll save that. And then let's go back to our, uh, I'm going to close some things, the form, we'll close our main, um, we'll close this, and we'll just go to the screen. Uh, okay, uh, screen, so we have our list screen. And our list screen actually calls a component we make called grocery list, which is where we actually want it. So we're actually probably going to be able to simplify some things here. Um, so right now, when this loads, we actually call this thing called load data. Uh, we actually call init, which calls load data. So I'm going to, um, just for purposes of simplifying some stuff here, I'm just going to comment these things out for now. And if we refresh, oh, oh, I should, sorry, I shouldn't have, shouldn't have commented that all of it out. Uh, I'm just going to actually just comment out the init. So in theory, this will never call, which means this will never get called, that kind of stuff, unless we actually refresh it. Uh, so I'm just going to refresh uh, the screen, and you're going to see no grocery items. And that's because uh, we're not calling this anymore. Um, but the grocery items are there. They should be, they should be part of this, this items array. Um, so we have our grocery list provider. Um, what I actually now want to be working with instead of, um, instead of this, uh, data that the screen is calling and all that kind of stuff is we want, uh, let me find it, um, do, 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 items. Yeah. So right in our, we can do this right in our build. I don't know if we could do it in different places, but our build is going to be totally fine for this. Um, so what I can do is say, I'm just going to say final items equals, and we can do get it and auto import it from our main.dirt and we'll paste in grocery list provider. We also need that. And actually what I usually like to do is make a, uh, something called uh, you know list provider or whatever. Um, we'll just call it, uh, well, let's just keep the name consistent, grocery list provider. And then we can go final um, items, or let's just call it grocery uh, items. We, we know it's grocery. We, and we know it's a grocery thing. This is literally called the grocery list. Uh, items is going to be equal to list provider dot items. There we go. And then we're we were originally talking to this underscore items. We're now going to use this items. This this uh, that should be good. So there, look, it's already in here. Um, now this is funny because if I refresh, um, it's still there, but and it's. It's interesting because that refresh is actually what it's doing is is calling that uh, calling that API way again. Um, so that's not actually what we're going to want to do. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to we won't be doing it this way anymore. Uh, we won't be doing this anymore. We won't be doing this. We won't be doing this. Uh, the one thing that um, that we do need to make sure. Uh, oh yes, yeah, so we don't need this anymore. We actually don't even need this loading anymore. Uh, and why is that? Because we're going to make a property on. Um, we're going to make a property on here and we're going to call it, uh, it's going to be a bool and it's just going to say, it's going to be called ready and it's going to be equal to false by default when this thing boots up. Um, and yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, and then what we can do is after we set items, we can say this dot ready equals true. Now the thing is we do have to, um, we would have to now call notify listeners again, which I'm just gonna do. And then we'll try something else in a bit. So now instead of talking to loading, um, we're gonna say list provider dot ready. Uh, technically, if it's not ready, we're gonna have the circular progress indicator. Otherwise, um, we will. Now we have to refresh for that. Uh, and this dot ready equals true notify. Oh, yes, there's one major thing. And I usually forget this. Um, I'm, we could set up a, and, 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 and I might do that at a future point, a, a more like, um, 
stream there's a way to like do this a little bit better uh but for this case it's fine because this widget is is pretty simple but let's just open up our uh new uh create what was it called create add grocery item so we had this little thing here that was um to uh to do this form provider if state is mounted basically um or oh, sorry where is it yeah add listener we want to add a listener to the form provider for any time a change happens we want to just set state so that it knows to uh to rebuild uh, to do this, we're actually going to move our list provider uh, up to um, up to here, just so it's something we can access outside. Uh, and in that case, I do want to actually it doesn't matter. I've been something I've been like kind of back and forth about is when to use underscores, when to not. Um, and at first, I think I was like using them pretty much everywhere because I was just seeing, oh, that's what people are doing. But uh, and I know I don't need this outside of the class. And then I was like, oh, okay, like. No, and then I stopped using them inside functions because I'm like, well, this can't be accessed anyways. So you can't go like, you know, this file dot build dot item. So it's fine not to be private. It, it's scoped within here. Um, but technically, grocery list state, because it is private, uh, I can, um, I, I don't need an underscore because nothing, no other file can access this. So we are just going to keep it like that. Uh, whereas up here, um, this stuff is public because grocery list is public. Okay, so list provider, uh, so all that's good. And um, to do, I forget where we were, a little tidbit there. Oh yes, we are going to do this. Uh, so there's this little helper function I'm just gonna pull over, which is just set state if mounted. And it's just like a way so I can um, do this. And just in our init state, we wanna take our list provider and add a listener um, to set state if mounted, which is just calling this, but only if it's mounted. Um, it's kind of overkill, but it works. Okay, cool. So uh, that's good. Um, I'm curious what happens now if I refresh. In theory, nothing because we're not doing anything there. So let's, uh, all right, that will be good. Um, so let's try something. In theory, let's. this won't work. Like this won't work just blindly, but let's find, let's find out. I'm gonna add a new item called uh, cheese because we all like cheese. And we get the save now. Come back here. Yeah, it's of course not working yet. Okay, so let's let's walk through what we want to do there. Um, all right. Do, 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 item card. Um, okay, so let's go to our. We probably just missed a bunch of stuff. Okay, so let's just walk through this. Let's uh, close some stuff. Uh, we're gonna we'll go to our add grocery item screen. Um, yeah, that's probably, I mean, yeah, I don't think we actually even did anything here. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's why it didn't work. So this is kind of where we were. We have the handle save um, and we are going to then, uh, we need our, uh, we can, this is where we can use our get it, uh, did that import, um, or do I want to do it in, no, I feel like here's the most logical place to do it. And we only want to do it, obviously, if, you know, if the new item worked. So let's just go uh, get it. And this will be the uh, list grocery list provider. Um, uh, and then we just go dot add item. That's that function we made. And we're going to pass in new item. Now that add item function, as you'll see, what does it do? It adds the item and then notifies listeners. So actually that may even be enough. And in fact, you can see that somehow, somehow that just kind of worked um, or something weird happened. So we add it. Let me make sure that save item. This is the form provider. Save item. Grocery item service dot create. Just kind of walking through. Uh, oh yeah. Um, that's interesting because yeah, we no longer actually want to do this. Just cleaning up some stuff because we're not. Um, that's interesting. Okay, let's do a refresh and let's just let's try this now. Uh, now it's not gonna be perfect, but cheese, save, come back here. Look, it's there. That's amazing. Everything's great. You can check it off. Check it off the list now. Um, obviously, let's uh, on our ad screen. We also want to navigate back after you do this. So that's as simple as navigator, navigator dot of context dot pop. And 
I'm still, I have the to do here to do, but I'm just going to say error. Um, we will deal with that at another time because I don't think there's an easy way to make an error right now. Uh, there's many ways we could have an error once there's a server, but I think this is all good. Great. Uh, so we have our thing. Let us, uh, let us, yeah, I think the most, I mean, the most obvious thing to do next is we need a way to, uh, to choose, you know, choose what type of item it is. Um, how do we want to do that? Um, we could have a drop down. Um, I've used this drop down library in Flutter a few times. Um, I wonder if there's something better. Um, Flutter. Um, Like I basically just want kind of one of those like select inputs. I think this is the one that I've used before. Let me see. Oh no, this is different. Oh, this might be fun. Yay, let's let's use something new. Uh, something else I've been doing recently. Forever I was always just grabbing this and copying and pasting the whole thing and putting my pub dev, but I've just been recently just doing flutter pub add and then do it. And it, you know, it gets you the most recent version, or at least probably the most recent compatible version, I would assume. Um, and then it's in there and it's good. Um, now this, you can kind of also see like what it installed in, uh, or I don't know, it's showing, yeah, it's showing the difference. This thing got added. Now there's a chance, uh, we might have to do a full rebuild, but I doubt this library actually uses anything native. Okay. So let's look at the, uh, the source. Let's look at the readme real quick. Usually I like to just skim this, um, just to kind of see, okay, there's a list of things. Great. And then you create a select form field. Um, Initial value, duh, duh, duh. And that's just the circle star value, initial value circle. Where's this come? I feel like I feel like there's just maybe a mistake in this. Like I feel like that's supposed to be the value. So form field out drop down or can be dialogue. Okay, well we're just gonna try uh, we're just gonna try playing with it. So we'll start very simply. Um, Rather than rethinking this whole thing um, and doing it and then realizing we don't want to use this library, let's just let's just throw it in in the uh, add grocery item screen. So here we already have uh, an input for our text, and let's import this. So I'm just going to um, let's just copy and paste this, and we'll do our import, and then items. Uh, we're going to call this um, options. Uh, or sorry, categories, you might as well. And we don't need that semicolon there. We'll just put a comma and then categories we need to make. And we're just going to, for now, um, literally in our build function, this is not where it will be. We'll just make it. And I should be able to just copy, actually, let's just copy this whole thing and grab that word that we made, categories, put it there, get rid of this line, save. All right, let's refresh. And click add, and then here we go. Okay, we got no element, and I think that's because of the error I thought I already saw. I can't find one called circle box star. There's like an initial value of circle, but circle was not a thing. So let's refresh and go add. There you go. Cool. This is this is pretty sweet. Um, I'm down for this. Let's see the other one. It said it can be dialogue as well. Hmm. That's not horrible either. We'll start. With, we'll, we'll stay with drop down. Um, cool. Okay. So obviously this is not, you know, we're not going to have a shape or anything like that. Um, let's first of all change that icon. This is the icon for the left side. Uh, and we'll just do it as... Like is it a tag or something like that? No. Uh, okay, here we go back to our material. Uh, material icons. Um, I kind of want. Well, let's just search for category. That's what they use for category, and I don't love it. Um, collection or something like I kind of want like in boots in font awesome like tag is kind of like yeah like this is what I want this is what I want I want like this local offer 
think that's what I want. I feel like that's uh, at least good for now. Definitely better than the shapes. Uh, and it shouldn't say shape, it should say category. Cool. Um, in fact, can, what do you need an icon? Maybe we just don't have an icon because then stuff line, lines up nicer. Okay, and label text, uh, that's what we just did. Um, we'll obviously have to deal with these on print and on, cha or on change things in a bit, but let's actually make this, uh, you know, make this better. Um, so now in theory, our categories will, no, they will never be, the pro I mean, who knows when we get to the API. They might be data, they may be database driven, they might not. Uh, for now, um, where do we actually, right now we have it in our, um, in our models, uh, um, in the, where is it, where is it? Models, grocery item. Right now, our best, you know, the way that we have categories is kind of like this. Um, so let us, <laughs> Honestly, for this case right now, until we make this database driven, I think we can just at least hard code this here. And then if we realize we need it somewhere else, we'll move it and we'll refactor, you know? You don't have to do everything right off the bat. So this will actually be a list instead of, uh, oh no, it will be, okay. So first of all, let's just not even think of that. Let's just think about our categories. Uh, and it's going to be equal to literally a list of category dot from flood. That's going to import from foundation. We don't want that category dot fraud. Oh shit, I did not, it did import from foundation. Okay, one sec. <laughs> Uh, maybe this would be better to do somewhere else. Okay, category dot, uh, category space. Make sure we get the one that says from listy. Okay, and I'm just going to go produce. And in fact, I'm going to just copy this whole thing and check this out. We're going to do command D on all of these. And we are going to go to the start, which is command shift left click left one more time and write the word category and then do dot there you go those are the tricks of the trade okay uh so we have these categories and then what i want to do is actually um, make a list of categories and we can, should be able to just do that by um and let's just do 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 do, do. Categories. Um, maybe I'll make this. Um, I'll make this one. Yeah, whatever, whatever. We're we're gonna refactor this anyways. Don't worry. I'm just doing it here for now. Uh, so what we're gonna do is make something called categories. And it's gonna be equal to categories dot entry dot. Sorry, it's a it's an array. So dot we can do dot map. And each of these will have an item or a category. And we ultimately want to return from each of these something that looks like this. Uh, and we're not going to worry about icons right now. Uh, and let's just return that. Um, the value will be basically uh, category. And the label, sorry, the category. This is just an enum, so it's really just like one, two, three, four, five. So what we actually have to do is take our grocery item dot category from string from category, and we'll pass in that category right there. And then this would actually be grocery item um, And we'll do, we're actually gonna do the same thing, string from category, we're just gonna make a label, except we will um, maybe like title case it or something. Let's just do, uh, let's just keep it like that. We'll make value and label the same for now. Uh, then we have to make sure this gets turned back into a list after we map out, uh, which means we can get rid of this. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit crazy, but I wonder if it worked. It did, there it is. So yeah, all we're doing, we're basically grabbing these enums. Um, this could definitely be something that 
lives somewhere else, uh, but this is fine for now. Uh, so we got all those and we're good. Okay. So now um, what we let, let's review what we're doing with our text so we can figure out how to re do it here. So uh, where's our text input? Item name, uh, decoration. So all we're doing is on change. We're just setting, um, we're setting a, uh, uh, setting its name. So we kind of want to do something similar here. Uh, so let's just make this into a more normal function. And we're going to go form provider dot um, set category, which doesn't exist yet, but we're going to pass in val, uh, except we want to actually take, because this is going to be that string interpretation of it. Um, what we actually want to do, and actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's keep the value of the form, just the enum value, which will be like zero, one, two, three, that kind of thing. Hmm, will that work? No, I think it needs to be a string. Okay, never mind, never mind. And what we're gonna do is actually, when we set it, we are going to take this, uh, and we wanna do, instead of string from category, we do category from string, and we're gonna paste in val. Um, so that will take whatever that value is, which is like the lowercase letters, and actually turn it back into that enum that I want my set category to be expecting. Uh, form provider. Let's go to our form provider. So we had set name. We also need void set category, and it's going to take a category um, called category. Now, did did we import the right? Thing. The name category is define the library. Yeah, yeah, see. Never call things, never call things category again. Um, okay, yeah, so it was already imported. Uh, I don't know why that's there. Uh, this is giving us that thing, uh, but rather than using it, I am just going to go like this, copy this. This will be set category, set category, and this uses a category called category. Uh, why is that? The name category is defined found what? This auto import again. Okay. <laughs> We're renaming that. We're gonna maybe we'll do a refactor of calling that grocery grocery category. Uh, and we don't want to set its name, we want to set its category equal to category. Yeah we might do a refactor of that at some point soon. So then, where were we? Uh, the grocery scene, uh, the, the scene, sorry, screen, um, set category. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, right, because this could be null. Uh, so then we'll just, mm, wait, why is that not? Oh, yeah, because it needs to. Uh, Technically, we could pass null up here, so we want to also say that this could be null. Uh, all right, I think that's the way to do it. So when it changes, it's going to set that. Um, to test this, let's just put uh, some, I like to sometimes just do this, text, and just go form provider dot form dot, uh, sorry, form provider dot, um, dot item, what is it, grocery item? Yeah, grocery item dot category. Uh, and we will convert this to a string just by wrapping it. Uh, okay, uh, we got some major errors here. Um, maybe we'll go if. Does not equal no. Okay, let's just uh, let's just refresh. Add. Yeah, we definitely get this, this fun fun thing happening here. Um, what is that? Yeah, what what is even happening here? Okay, let's let's get rid of my debugging. I think it's maybe messing something up, or I messed something else up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, it's because I bet it's because of this initial value. Uh, 
So uh, for now, I'm just going to make the same miscellaneous. Okay, cool. That was probably the problem um, originally, meaning I could put this back in and change this back to miscellaneous. So here we go, category.frozen, cool. Um, change this to aisle, miss, frozen. So yeah, we're setting and getting it back and everything's great. So we can get rid of our debugging. Okay, so now that we have that, um, and miscellaneous will just be the default, and we're gonna make these prettier and blah, blah, blah at some point. Uh, I don't think we need on saved. I don't think. And yeah, we'll get rid of the icon there. Yeah, this is good. Uh, so the last thing I think is we need in our uh, service, uh, Koshi item service, we are just passing in, oh no, category is getting passed here. So, but I think it was on maybe the uh, the form itself. Yeah, say, save item, save item. Somewhere we are just hard coding it, yeah. So here we actually want to pull in um, this dot grocery item dot category. Uh, and in fact, if we are eventually gonna, you know, I mean, unless we do a refactor, we are kind of saying like category can be null. So let's also just say here, it can be null. Um, and this we can wrap uh, category does not equal null. We will do that. If not, we'll just set the whole thing to null. And we'll just make sure either our API supports null categories or we'll refactor stuff for null safety. Put a comma there, just this is a little bit more pretty. Uh, so now if we actually uh, go and add test one, two, three, and let's put it in dairy and click save. Uh, test one, two, three, dairy. Um, not sure why where that space is, is there. Uh, no idea at this moment. Um, yeah, what is that space? Why is there a space there? Oh, I know why. <laughs> there actually isn't a space. It looks, I think this column is, <laughs> this right here is a column and it's centering. And these ones just look good because they happen to be similar lengths. We can fix that. Uh, one great thing about hot reload is that your state doesn't get affected and it will run through your code again. Um, so we can make this change without having to go and, you know, recreate a test dairy product thing. Um, right. Grocery. What is this? This is in the list. And I think it's actually, there's a list card we made a grocery item card. Um, and where do we have this column right here? So we can just do cross al access alignment, cross access alignment dot start. And that will put everything towards the left. That was fun. Okay. Um, I think that's a good spot uh, to to call it for now. Um, we don't want to, you know, I don't want to make these videos like epically long or anything, or rather a bunch of short ones. So um, yeah, we have, uh, doesn't seem like much, or we have adding a new item. Um, yeah, uh, I'd say next stuff to do, there's, there's definitely some tidy up and refactoring. Uh, there's this little you know, some validation. Oh no, we have the validation here, but for instance, uh, there's some weird thing happening when I uh, when I save this, this the circle is really weird. Uh, there's error stuff we have to deal with. And then, um, so that's like little stuff. I'd say the next logical thing is actually finding a way to render this stuff by, um, you know, by category, uh, in, at least in some kind of order. Uh, so that will probably be next. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then we're probably gonna have to Probably gonna have to uh, kind of pivot over a little bit and do a little bit of back end. Uh, not sure. It might be Firebase. It might be it might be something in Python. We'll we'll make that up as we go. All right. Until next time.